everybody, everybody here Absolutely. and online. Absolutely. We're going to pray and do our um, the canopy of God protection. There it is. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather tonight. We thank you, God, that we are still able to get together with people of like minded faith yes, and to learn and grow in our walk with you. God, we just ask that you would give us tender hearts to hear what you are saying to us tonight and help us to not be hearers only but doers of your word. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Speaking of place on the most high. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in whom I will trust. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You anoint my nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come by thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Then shall show evil to fall again. Not a sugar and plague come not thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their wings, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the arrow, the young lion and the dragon shall not trample thy defeat. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. All right, you may be seated. We're going to start off with a quiz. I hope everybody brought their notes. Or I hope you remember from, you know, just one Bible study ago. <laughs> Question number one. This was the, uh, all of this was from Pastor John last week when we started talking about prayer. He said, we need to learn the theology of prayerology. Neology. 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 Oh, I <laughs> Should 
want whatever God wants. True. True. We should want whatever God wants, all right? Number six. What is the one thing God has to honor? His word. His word. All right. Give me that I know. His word. That's right. All right, here's the tricky one. Pastor John gave us a Greek word, zeo, meaning to have a passion or be boiling. What is that Greek word for in English? Fervent. No. Fervent. Fervent. Yes. yes. Zeo means fervent to have a passion or be boiling. Good job. Where? This is number eight. Where is the passage that says in the Bible, if my people who are called by my name will come up. <laughs> Good job. Okay, nine and ten are easy ones. They're gonna come from the stuff that we say every time we get together. Every member of this church is healed, healed healthy, healthy, blessed, blessed and, and prosperous. That was so weak but right. <laughs> weak but correct. All right, and from Psalm ninety one. Thou shalt tread upon the mine and the adder. All right, that was a little bit better. <laughs> All right, good job on the quiz, guys. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to go back and look at that on my That was 10 whole questions. I think you really need to revisit. We need to learn the theology of neology. I, I feel like you right. need that little nugget. Yes, ma'am. I need that <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Pastor John has had a couple of different themes going as he usually does something for Wednesday, something for Sundays. Wednesdays now are about prayer and Sundays are about revival and I decided to mix those two together. Hey. Our topic for tonight is mission critical communication. Mm. Mission critical communication. So the definition the ability of delivering communication means where conventional networks cannot meet the required demand. And I don't suggest you write that down because that was a lot of words. But I mean, <laughs> basically, where conventional communication fails, this is where mission critical communication steps in. Now, um, last week we talked about prayer being our way to communicate with God and how many feel like in these days in the 2020 just this one year not even the 2020 just 2020 talking to God is critical yeah. anybody yeah. feel like that yeah. or the new 2020 word for stuff that's important is essential uh, <laughs> you gonna feel like communicating with God is essential to get through these days so let's just uh, take an example. Imagine someone waiting on a call with information that could save their life, but the call getting, couldn't get through because so many other things were tying up the line. Mm -hmm. Prayer is our mission critical means of communication as believers. You can't call God on the phone, you can't DM him, you can't <laughs> text him, we can't bribe him, we can't bully him. The way we're gonna communicate with God is prayer, and that is essential, it is critical. And God can communicate with us however he wants to, but it does take effort on our part. God isn't gonna be like, I want this chair to speak to her, because she ain't listening to nothing else. He could, but we got so many other avenues to you know, that's going to be a last resort. You walk around expecting trees and all that to talk to you. You got a whole other thing you need to start praying about. Mm -hmm. A whole other issue. <laughs> and, and as people living in America who are so privileged, not only do we have so many ways to communicate, but we have a ton of things vying for our attention. I mean, just think about all the things that you're bombarded with every day. And our minds are kind of like just stuff coming, all, all kinds of 
We have family input, friend input, job input, social media input, news input, just, I mean, so much pouring in. And God is trying to get that critical, essential message to us. So we have to know how to get that mission critical communication to go through above everything else. Amen? Amen. So, um, side note, there's a really good book by Pastor Stephen Furtick called Crash the Chatterbox. And I just suggest that for your further reading. This is not really based on that, but as you can tell from the title, with all the other chatter out there, that book just is uh, some teaching on how to focus on God and how to silence everything else. Amen? All right. <clears throat> so, I'm going to be the opposite of everyone else and give you my four points right now. <laughs> and then we'll just, you know, expand on each one to sum it up. Number one, purpose. These are the four points of what we must consider if we want to have successful, mission-critical communication. Number one was purpose of four points, or four things that we must consider if we want to have successful, mission-critical communication. Number one was purpose. Number two is responsible. Number two is responsible. Number three, active. And number four, yielded. Number one was purpose. Number two, responsible. Number three, active. And number four, yielded. All right, let's get into our scripture. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Sister Jordan, what does that say? You know, my people who are yes, that's just where it's all about prayer. And prayer is essential for inviting God into our situation. That verse starts with the most important word, if. God's not just going to come down and be like, oh, y'all are just ridiculous. I can see you need my help. He knows we need him, but he's waiting for us to do our part and invite him in. He sees things going left. He sees things falling apart. But when we keep like, no, I can handle it. No, I can do it. He's waiting on us to invite him in. And he's got the, the word we need, the resource we need, everything we need. We just have to be in, involved in that critical communication with him so that we can link up and know that. All right, so number one was purpose. You cannot be focused on a mission or a purpose if you don't even know what it is. <laughs> it's kind of hard to be like, yes, I'm going to get this task done today, and you don't have a clue what the task is. I mean, it, it can be something so similar. If your parents say, get the chores done, and they leave the house, you don't know, do they want me to wash dishes? Am I supposed to clean the room? Am I supposed to vacuum? I mean, details of what we need to know what the mission is. And as believers, we must go to God, our maker and manufacturer, to know our true purpose. Y'all know it doesn't make any sense. I think um, Pastor John used the example, we're riding around in the Honda, and we go take our car to the Porsche dealership. They're not the ones that made that car. I mean, you might wish you was driving a Porsche, <laughs> but taking your Honda up there is not going to do you any good. You got to go to the ones who made that to tell you how this is supposed to work. Amen. And so as believers, we go to God. If we want to know why am I here, why is this happening, why, 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 God is the only one that's able to give us our true purpose. The one who designed you is the only one who can tell you what you were made for. And I was on a call the other day, and I heard this quote before, but was reminded of it. It says, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. I mean, that's big. Because so many people are just, that, that's how you can get to the point of suicide. If stuff just seems completely hopeless and you have no reason why you're even here, that's how you can get to the point of, I might as well give up. 
But if you know that there's a goal you're trying to reach and there's something you're trying to accomplish, even if stuff comes against you, you still have that mission that you're trying to, to work out, to work towards, and you, you don't give up as easily, hopefully. <clears throat> if we are to have successful communication with God that helps us grow and develop in our relationship with Him, we need to start by finding out what He has us here for. That's just the simplest thing. Perfect. We need to know what He has us here for. And another quote that um, this topic made me think of was Miles Monroe called, The wealthiest place on the planet isn't any gold mines and diamond fields and all that is right down the road, the cemetery. There is buried the greatest treasure of untapped potential. When you die with a uh, still full of all that God has placed on the inside of you, just imagine what the cemetery is full of. And he goes on in the quote more detail. Books that weren't written, businesses that were never started, devices that were never invented, just all kinds of stuff because sometimes we're too afraid to step out. Sometimes we just don't seek God. We do what feels right to us. We may live a happy life, but we don't live a purpose-filled life. So the number one thing that we need for consistent, for critical, mission-critical communication is to know our purpose. All right. Any comments, questions, concerns? All right, number two. Um, something that I have seen a lot, uh, I've seen it on like memes, t-shirts, all of a sudden says, poor planning or procrastination on your part doesn't constitute an emergency on my part. That is huge. That means somebody is being irresponsible. They're trying to woke up late and, and now this and now that well that's on me I got the rest I got up on time you know or you show them that I accounted for traffic the same traffic that has been this way for the last 10 years I knew it was going to happen you know we have to be responsible and consistent mission uh, mission critical communication is our responsibility we can't put that off on anybody else we are the ones who are responsible and how many of you know somebody that uses prayer or talking to God as a break glass in case of emergency sort of deal mm -hmm. they, you know I, everything's going good or pretty good I can handle this it's just little stuff in my life then something big happens and all of a sudden oh I need you to pray with me oh God what am I going to do God I need you well, well God you know what? why didn't you feel like you needed him before God is not our emergency backup. He is our everything, or should be our number one go-to because he's the one, again, giving us the critical information that we need in order to carry out the task that we're created for. And that's a huge deal. <clears throat> you know, sometimes we get to, man, I just didn't have time to pray today. I had so much on my plate. And uh, everybody just go ahead and no judgment. And we get busy. It's 2020. Mm -hmm. Again, we got all the input, people pulling at us from a, a thousand different directions. It's not to say if you didn't spend two hours with God, you're going to hell. It, we have to make time for what's important. Again, this is our responsibility. And, you know, there's people you have relationships with, and you have those on purpose. Think about someone from your high school that you're still close to and someone you haven't talked to in however many years it's been. That's not by accident. You either weren't that close to that person to begin with or you let that kind of slip away. Maybe even you wanted to keep the relationship with that person, but they let the communication lapse. It's because somebody made the effort or lacked the effort to keep it going you know, like, man, she was a really nice person. She was so cool. Our family members, you see them at funerals and weddings, and they're real cool. I'm like, you know, she's probably a lovely person. I don't call you in between said weddings and funerals because I'm not making time for it. It's not that I don't like you. It's you not mission critical, you know? So what we have to do is put God at the top of that list, or not even at the top, at the very center, because I've, um, 
can't even remember where I heard it, but I say it a lot. There is a big difference between value and priority. You know, your priorities change. Because for most of us, going to work every day is a priority. We've got bills to pay. I sort of like to eat every day. It's kind of pleasant. But if I, if I was married and had kids and I had a sick kid, my uh, kid is sick, that go to work priority has just changed, hasn't it? I'm going to call them and I'm going to say, listen, I've got a situation that trumps this i'm gonna have to take care of this because as much of a priority as that is depending on the situation if we don't want god on our priority list where he can get bumped up and down depending on i was totally gonna pray today but then i spilled coffee on my shirt and i was late and mm. blah, 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 and, and then god is whew, i tried to squeeze in a quick prayer before i laid down but whew, as soon as i got on my knees i passed right out we don't want god on that list we want him to make make him a core value. That means no matter what's going on, priorities going up and down, shifting and changing, God is still at the center. Amen? So just think about when you get to heaven and stand before God, what are you going to say? If uh, Think about the people treating God as a backup. Are, are they going to hand him their planner and be like, God, I would have totally made time for you, but look at what my schedule was. And you see these receipts, I had to go help the poor. God, I just had so much going on. It, you think God's going to be like, oh, I understand. No. <laughs> I put you here for this turn purpose. The you did not do what I called you to do because you were busy. You know, God's not going to be like, Okay, you have um, a, a note for why you didn't do what I called you to do. No. What you gonna give them? This is my doctor's note. I would have I would have gone and tried to minister to the people in jail, but I had all these stomach aches and I had to figure out what it was. And if you got a doctor's note, you think the Lord was like, Okay, if you got a doctor's note then you know, I'll just call somebody else to do that. He will call somebody else to do it, but you not gonna get away with just I would have Lord but you know, we have to take responsibility. That's number two. We can't blame anybody or anything else. We have to make it happen. Okay? Another example. Oh, yes. Okay. It just, um, I know when you were saying make times, I remember Pastor John, uh, John telling us, it's not that we have to find time. It's that we have to make time. Because mm -hmm. the time is already there. It's which priority or what is the priority in your mm -hmm. life. That is exactly right. I found another example about uh, imagine um, a parent saying that I really meant to feed my baby this week. I mean, I knew she was hungry. She cried a couple times, and I had every intention. I know the doctor told me feed her every couple of hours, but every time I went to do it, something came up. Just imagine that. Does that not sound insane? <laughs> Your tiny That's baby, you're like, you. I was really going to feed her, but I mean, Something just happened, and then it was the end of the day, and as soon as I started mixing up that bottle, I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. And somebody would be like, I need you to go get under the jail. Okay. Don't just go <laughs> get under it. I need you under. It's just, it's just that crazy because feeding an oh, infant no. baby is critical. Oh. It's not something that you can let slide mm -hmm. up and down oh, the list. No. And that's how we have to see our, our communication with God. We can't be like, oh, God, I'll squeeze it in if I can, but I don't know. It would be just as ridiculous to feel like we can go a whole day without talking to God as it would be to feel like, I just did give that baby a bottle today. It'll be all right. I will totally feed him twice tomorrow. Mm. That ain't going to work. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm not sure where you're getting that from, but stop. <laughs> Anybody else? Comments, questions, concerns? All right, but basically we have to be uh, intentional about our time with God. So, a story I can share. I unfortunately was around when my niece was born. I did not want to be, it was painful. But <laughs> afterwards I went to help my sister out and stayed with her and her husband for a little bit. And the doctor had told us when she was born that she had to eat every few hours, I can't remember what it was. And we were like, oh, okay, like, even if she sleep, like, we got to wake her up to eat. And they were like, yes, she has to eat every so often. So I am a person.
person that loves order and organization and rules, Come that on, is yes. my jam. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah, y'all know, everybody that's just in here with me. That's you, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> babies are a lot of work. So, she was messing up clothes, so there's tiny laundry everywhere. Every bottle got to be disinfected and washed every couple of seconds. You got to keep mixing up all the bottles. You only have so many ready because that stuff can't just sit. And bottle warmers are a hassle because if it gets too hot, I was like, oh, the Lord, you need a whole. And then somebody got to be in charge of when was the last time she ate Who's going to wake her up? Because she sleep when I'm I'm supposed to be sleep during this. I don't want to wake up just so she can halfway be awake. So, uh, no. So I made this delightful color-coded schedule for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody. <laughs> not, even, not in my house, not in my baby, none of that. I just took it upon myself to make a delightful color-coded, you got laundry today, okay? You got dishes. And you got feeding. So that we all at least had a night to sleep or, you know, keep your hands out the dishwasher. You know, that's not good for your skin. <laughs> so it, it wasn't received well, basically. <laughs> Let me just say that. But the point of this whole thing is I knew it had to get done, and I wanted to be intentional about how it was going to get done. I wasn't just like, well, let's hope one of us wakes up to feed the baby. What? Well, let's hope that every time the baby needs to eat, we don't have to go wash out a bottle right then. Can't even go make the bottle because all of them dirty. Or next time she has a blowout, can we find a onesie? All the onesies dirty. Where are her clothes and all we got is this church dress. <laughs> we had to make sure that was ready. <laughs> and equally as intentional as I was about a baby that wasn't mine and a house that wasn't mine, that's how intentional we got to be about our critical communication with God. We can't be like, I hope it happens. I hope it works out. We, if it needs to be a color-coded schedule, if you need to team up with somebody else, like, hey, tell me what scripture you read in your Devo today. Let's talk about it real quick. Or send me a quick, what did you get out of this? Because we can help each other out. It doesn't have to be, it's all on me. And, oh, Lord, I tried it. I'm so busy. We're here for each other. We have to help each other out because, again, this is critical to fulfilling, fulfilling our purpose that God put us here for. Amen? Amen. Amen. Another thing I just read on a relationship blog said, if you're making them a priority, be sure they're also making you one. Amen. Now, that can go a whole lot of different ways, but imagine God only prioritized us as much as we prioritize him. Just, no. just think about that. I was going to wake you up this morning. But, but I forgot. Then she started praying. And <laughs> just the whole life. Right. Like, do you know what's going on in Africa right now? Did you hear about what was I was totally going to help you pay that bill, but I got busy. You know? <laughs> we don't want God to be bumping us up and down the list. Lord, when I pray, I need you to hear me. So can we do less? Can we just be like, God, I'm totally going to talk to you, just not right now. Because I don't want him putting me on the back burner, amen? All right, number three. <clears throat> when something is active, that means it is engaged or ready to engage. Mm -hmm. And that is how our mission-critical communication with heaven should be, ready to engage. We not, might not be on our knees 24-7, but we are completely able to maintain an attitude of prayer and a spirit of prayer as we go throughout our day. We need to be active, engaged, or ready to engage at any time. <clears throat> then, when an opportunity arises, we won't have to be worried, upset, wondering for days, oh, Lord, is that you? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. And oh, I kind of think that God wants me to do this, but I wasn't sure if that was him. And then opportunity's gone. We have to be ready because if we've already been at step one and step two, we've talked to God and know our purpose. 
we're responsible, we're taking part, we're making sure, hey, God, I'm serious about this thing and I'm intentional, I'm going to keep up this communication with you. The part of being active is knowing his voice so that when he does speak and tell us something, we don't have to take eight or nine days and have a prayer meeting and a consultation and a, you know, uh, just all this. We don't have to take a vote. <laughs> we can just be like, hey, God set this up and I'm stepping out into it. Amen. something? Oh, no. <laughs> all right. So we've been responsible. We've been intentional. We've been staying in communication with God about what our mission is and we'll be able to readily recognize when the doors opening are the right one because how many you know pastor john has already mentioned it too that god's not going to be the only one opening doors mm-hmm. and setting up opportunities mm-hmm. if it's an opportunity at the wrong time it's not an opportunity it's a distraction mm-hmm. we don't want to fall for those if we've been staying engaged in our critical mission critical communication with god we'll know wow yeah that does look like a good idea but that's not a god idea that's not my door to walk through so i'm gonna keep on stepping and we don't have to be like oh i really just don't know what i should do i think like such a great idea and i kind of have an interest in that now we can like no my purpose is over here and what's over here on the right seems nice but i know that's not me I, I can pray about whoever, because whenever we're not in the right place, we're messing up somebody else, too, because we're in their space. You got to think about that. Whenever we're not doing what God has called us to do, it's, it's not just affecting us. And <clears throat> this is where Pastor John also last week talked about uh, know, where knowing the word comes in. And um, we talked about in the quiz that know when the word of God is what is uh, needed for effective prayer. If you don't know what God has said, what he is saying, you won't know when he speaks to you. You have to know what he has said to know what he will say. Because the enemy will come at you with something that it will have just enough truth in it to sound legit, but when you measure it against the word of God, you'll know. Like, oh no. This, this is not it. This is something all, all off. This don't have nothing to do with me, and I'm not going to fall for it. We have to know the Word of God. And that comes back into, two being responsibility. A lot of people just trying to read the Bible straight up, sit down, open it up, will knock them out immediately. <laughs> but we have to find some kind of way to get the Word in us. I listen to sermons and stuff a lot, and YouTube is a delight sermons and good stuff and if you can't take a whole hour and some change they got little six minute clips you can get a good nugget I, my sister I was driving her car today I don't know what radio station she got it on but it only took me like six minutes to drive here I was like man I wish I could take notes and drive at the same time some kind of little sermon I heard but dude was, was, was talking I was like man that was good let me just send myself a text real quick when I get to this stop sign just that quick. It was less than a 10-minute drive. We have plenty of opportunities to get the word in us. And I know uh, sometimes, you know, you can't make the church. You just all kinds of stuff happens. Or you try to read your Bible, you got so tired. But there's no excuse these days. We just talked, started off talking about all the information stuff coming at us from all over the place. You can make time to make some of that the word of God, no matter how you have to do it. Even that Bible app, they got video plans and plans you can listen to. You don't even have to read. So if you're the type of person that need to be doing something, moving, go walk and listen to the Bible. You know, do something to make sure you are familiar with the word of God. I have a friend that said she was in a really, really bad accident and she was just feeling so sorry for herself. And I mean, it was a bad accident and someone gave her um, let me see, how old was it? She's not that old, so it must have been a DVD. A DVD, <laughs> I'll send you a DVD or video, but a DVD of a sermon to watch while she was in the hospital. And the accident that she was in, I think the car got flipped or something. Her hand was all messed up. She lost a finger. And in the sermon that she was watching, the pastor specifically said, you laying there feeling sorry for yourself because you don't have a finger. Somebody died yesterday. And you need to get up, pick yourself up, da da da. And she was like, "Oh, all right, Lord, I hear that." Was from me. That message was from years prior. Someone gave her that DVD, 
and God spoke directly to her situation. God wants to do that for each of us, but if we're not availing ourselves to what's out there, God isn't going to just be like, let me download this sermon in her brain real quick. I know she ain't got time for it. Uh uh. We have to do our part. God is more than willing to do his part, but so many of the promises in the word are conditional. If we don't do our part, God is not obligated to do anything on our behalf. We have to be intentional. Amen? Amen. All right. So, uh, again, many believers out here chasing a fresh word, a new prophecy, and they haven't acted on the last thing that God said. I mean, God has put out so much, so much. I went to a women's meeting at one of my friends' church last night. Guess what they're talking about at their church? Prayer and revival. God is doing what he needs to do. It is up to us to do our part. When she started talking, I was like, okay, Jesus. Like some of the same stuff that I was preparing for this lesson, they talked about it last night. I was like, oh, God is connecting us. I mean, we have so much available to us to get it done. We really have no excuse. So, again, we just need to take active steps. This is all about being active and responsible, okay? Mm -hmm. And our last one, number four, we must acknowledge that what I want and what I feel doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I know that that was just a hard <laughs> thing to even hear. <laughs> what you feel does not matter. God never called us to operate by our feelings. Number the fourth thing was yielded. We have to be willing to yield our will to His completely. When we've gotten the mission from God, we know our purpose. Even if it's just a purpose for a season, we may not know what He wants us to be doing 30 years down the road, but we know right now what our purpose is. When we're responsible, we're not trying to blame anybody else or our schedule or business. When we're intentional about spending time with God, we're actively staying in an attitude of prayer, that's when the yield it comes because we are listening and acting in faith, and now we just have to let go. And it's a lot of stuff we've got to let go. Number one is letting go of how we expect God to do it. You have to have an expectation, yes, but the expectation that God's going to do what he said he would do. But how he does it, we can't put God in a box. Right? It just does us a disservice. We're like, well, God did do this, but I expected him to do it this way. Hmm? Is that what that means? Zebra, okay? <laughs> let me just go ahead and tell you, it doesn't make any sense. We have to let go of our timeline. Y'all know, uh, probably you have a personal testimony of where God has come through. Boy, did he wait until what seemed like the last <laughs> possible second. Like, Lord, I'm really glad you did that. However, can we work on a little, I need to come through at least a day or two earlier than what you've been doing. I trust you. You just scared me. <laughs> we got to let go of our timeline. Because, you know, we'd be ready. To, oh, I guess it's not going to work out. Oh, Lord, what is I going to do? <laughs> but God still comes through. We have to, <clears throat> excuse me, let go mm -hmm. of just every expectation that would limit God, every expectation that would cause us to give up on God. We don't want to put ourselves in a place of like, well, I was trusting God, but I don't know, he, he might fail me this time. What sense is that? None. It's nonsense. It's crazy. We have so many examples in the word of God, too, that, that God chooses to handle stuff in a way that is not likely to line up with what we would do or what we would choose. For example, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is the perfect example. The Israelites got all these centuries and centuries of waiting for this warrior king, Messiah. And what does the Lord send? A little infant baby who grows up to be a carpenter and allows himself to be killed by religious hypocrites. We know he rose on, on the third day, but they was living it. I thought this was going to be the Messiah. He was supposed to overthrow the Romans and all of this other stuff. God doesn't do stuff 
like we thought he would. And we just have to let go of everything. Imagine Joseph had, like, that, you know, Joseph had the dream. Imagine he was just like, oh, I cannot wait. I know God's going to do this, 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 this. But if God had said, okay, yeah, you're going to be second in command in Egypt, but this is what I'm going to need you to go through first. I'm going to need you to be betrayed by your brothers, lied on by this heifer, <laughs> going thrown into prison. That's not a church word, my bad. No, heifer's in the Bible. It is. Well, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll add the scripture in the comments later. <laughs> uh, um, you're going to be betrayed. You're going to be thrown into prison. You're going to be forgotten. All of this. And then after that, you'll be ready to be second in command. I could have been like, yeah, let's just go back to being a shepherd with my brothers because I don't think this is what I'm cut out for. I know you say I'm cut out for the Lord. Ooh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> that sounds horrible. That's why we might as well not even try to figure out how God's going to work anything out because, yikes, if he showed us A to Z, whew, we'd be like, God, what you going to do? Reveal it to me. No, don't even. You know I can't handle this one. You know I can't. So, think about <clears throat> you have survived 100% of the tough times and the struggles that you've had up to this point. Not because of you, but because God has got you through. You have a perfect record. Nothing has taken you out yet. You may have feel like it, felt like it. I know I just saw a post somebody said that I am tired of things that don't kill me but make me stronger. Mm. <laughs> I'm sick of those things because they get close to killing me. But the fact is you're still here and it's not because of you. It's because God has never left you never forsaken you and he didn't let you go and he's not going to start now the one thing we have to remember is that we have to surrender just like Jesus did in the garden the main word is nevertheless Jesus did not want to go to the cross he wasn't like oh, I can't wait I'm about to show these Woo. he was <laughs> crying and like if this cup could pass he did not want to in his flesh, but he knew what was needed and what his purpose was. So he said, nevertheless, and what's so significant about that, that doesn't mean he all of a sudden did want to do it. He said, in spite of how I feel, your will be done. We have to have a nevertheless attitude. God, I know what my mission is. I know I'm being responsible and taking responsibility for it. I'm being active and constantly in a prayerful attitude so when you speak, when you say go left, when you say go right, I'm on it, and now I'm yielding. Nevertheless, no matter what I feel, no matter if you come through this way and I wanted you to come through that way, God, I'm yielding my will to yours. God, remember, Jesus did still want the cup to pass, but he said, even though I feel this way, I want your will to be done more than what I want. So we just have to yield to him so that his purpose can perfect can prevail. And I just also read too that anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. And I was like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Hmm. But it was about the people who um, maybe have depression or just too sad or upset to do certain things. Like, well, I'm, I'm just I don't even feel like running the dishwasher today because I won't feel like emptying it. So run it. You have to run it again, run it again. There's nobody telling you the rules. You feel like you you got to get in the shower, but you don't feel like it. You just get in the shower. If you got to sit down in the shower, if it's worth doing, it's worth just taking the step. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of attitude we need to have. Not to do things poorly, but even if I'm not going to do it perfectly, I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do it scared. I'm going to do it angry. I'm going to do it however it is that I'm feeling. If this is what God has called me to do, I'm going to do it with uncertainty because I trust God. That might be a temporary feeling, but I'm not going to let a temporary you know, feeling or situation dictate whether or not I live out my purpose. Amen. Amen. Just because God said so, I'm going to do it. I'm going to yield my will to his. In closing, if we are going to maintain successful mission-critical communication, we have to pray. 
Mm -hmm. That's a pray. And uh, the way this relates to revival as well, one thing I, that was a big takeaway that I got from the thing that I went to last night was that we each have a part to play in the revival that we want to see. Mm -hmm. We want to see revival in our city, in our state, and in our nation, and in the world. And we have a part to play with that. We, we can't just say, oh, that's the guys on TV. That's the big preachers of the mega church. Mm -hmm. We each have a part to play in the revival that we want to see taking place. So that's why if you don't know your purpose, how are you going to play your part? Imagine that one critical thing that hinges on you and you were too sleepy to pray. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. We have to pray for purpose and with a purpose. Amen. We have to be responsible for our prayer time. Take responsibility. Don't put it off and say it was anybody or anything else. Make the time for God. We must actively stay in the word of God and act on what he is saying to us. And finally, we must yield our will to his and not let a temporary situation determine our level of faith or trust in God. Things might not look or feel the way we want them to, but we must choose to trust and obey so that we can carry out our mission. Amen. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Hearts and minds, Claire. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we are able to get together tonight. We thank you for your word. God, we are so grateful that you use broken, messed up people like us to advance your kingdom. Well, God, we just pray that you would help us to see our part, <clears throat> to know what it is that you would have us to do to be a part of the revival that we want to see. God, we pray that you would help us to know our purpose, to be responsible with our prayer life, to actively seek you, to stay in your word, and to yield our will to yours. And as we go our separate ways, we pray that you would bless us and keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, everybody yeah. said. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Go in peace and sin no more.